You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, episode number 47. Hey guys, I hope everybody is having a good week. Uh, We are doing a birth story episode today, guys. So this week, Mallory came on the podcast and she told her birth story. She actually took my course, which is pretty cool. So just a little brief synopsis of Mallory's birth story. So she struggled with infertility for about two years, finally um, had surgery for uh, endometriosis, and then she was able to conceive the second cycle after that surgery. Had a lot of anxiety during her pregnancy, um, which is understandable after, you know, dealing with infertility for so long. Um, Another kind of unique thing about her pregnancy is that two-thirds of it was actually spent in a foreign country. (laughs) So her husband is in the army and they were stationed in Germany. And so her first couple trimesters of her pregnancy were in Germany, which is which is pretty interesting. She ended up moving back to the United States when she was about 30 weeks pregnant. And so she had to find a new provider and, you know, experience American (laughs) maternity care after having German prenatal care. And she actually lived in a hotel um, up until she was like 40 weeks pregnant, which was really stressful and just uh, something that I can't imagine even doing. Wow. So she talks about that and just her experience with that with living, you know, in a hotel basically like a few days before she gave birth. And she actually ended up bring her baby home to uh, her hotel and she kind of went into labor while she was moving into her new house. So it's just a very interesting story. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing for you guys, but without further ado, let's hear uh, Mallory's hotel baby birth story. (laughs) You're listening to the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast, where we firmly believe in the power of education when it comes to giving birth. Tune in each week as we dive into pregnancy-related topics, expert interviews, and a variety of birth stories. As a reminder, anything you hear on this podcast is not medical advice. Please see mommylabornurse.com slash disclaimer for more details. And now, here's your host, educator, registered nurse, and fellow mom, Liesl Teen. This episode of the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast was sponsored by Mommy Knows Best. Mommy Knows Best empowers all moms with the tools and resources necessary to give your newborn the best start in life. From an assortment of delicious lactation cookies to supplements and beyond, their products contain all natural herbal remedies traditionally and effectively used for generations to treat low milk supply. Whether you're a new mom or a pro, Mommy Knows Best gives you plenty of options, all of which are created with the health and safety of both baby and mom in mind. So I've actually been eating a lot of Mommy Knows Best cookies recently. Now that I am a breastfeeding mom, woohoo, for the second time, um, I eat, I probably eat about two cookies a day if I have a freshly baked um, batch or I eat some of those ready to eat. They have the ready to eat ones as well. I have those in my pantry as well. Um, but I probably eat two of those a day with my coffee in the morning. Um, and yeah, I I actually, I feel like they really do help. Like I, I just, I always feel full. Um, Rylan is definitely getting enough to eat because he is gaining weight like a little piggy. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like they, they actually do really work. Um, and they're delicious. I mean, they, I've, ha- I've tried a lot of different lactation things, um, especially not so much, you know, this time around, but with Walter, I had a lot of issues with, with my supply. I tried a lot of different things and a lot of different supplements, a lot of different bites and cookies and all this stuff. And yeah, these, I love them the most because they just taste like regular cookies and you can't taste the brewer's yeast. You can't taste anything weird about them. So yeah, big fan of Mommy Knows Best. And now I can actually like super back them um, because I'm actually a breastfeeding mom and I feel like they actually do work. So yeah, there's that. But yeah, if you want to get your hands on any Mommy Knows Best cookies or any of the other things that they offer, you can go to my link. It is mommylabornurse.com slash cookies. And you can use my code labornurse10, that's all one word, to get 10% off any Mommy Knows Best product. All right, guys, let's get into this week's episode. Hi, Mallory. Welcome to the Mommy Labor Nurse podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. 
Thanks for having me, Liesl. I'm really excited to yeah. chat with you and Yay. share my story with everyone out there. Yeah, awesome. Can you just start by telling listeners a little bit about yourself and your family and where you're from, what you do, all that good stuff? Sure. Um, well, I am, I'm originally from Texas, but currently living in California because my husband's in the army. So when you say, where are you from? It's kind of hard yeah. <laughs> to say like yeah. where you're from, but originally I'm all, I'll always be a Texan. Um, let's see. I'm mar- my husband's name is Mark. And then we have our little son, Max. His full name is Maximilian John, but we just Aww. call him Max. <laughs> Aww, cute. And he's, he'll be four months this week. Um, let's see, we've been, and at, right before we were in California, we were in Germany and that kind of plays into my Ooh. whole story. Cause we moved when I was 30 weeks pregnant. Wow. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like um, a lot of fun. <laughs> Are we going to yeah. call it fun or is it just something else? <laughs> it's an adventure. We'll yeah. Okay. There you go. Way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, oh, and then professionally, I'm also a registered nurse. So okay. I'm very proud to, yeah. to be a nurse. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. As we all are, <laughs> as we all should be right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. What kind of nursing? Well, <laughs> I have not actually had a job yet because right after I graduated gotcha. is when we moved to Germany and it was oh, gotcha. almost impossible to get a good job there yeah. even on base. So oh, then I said, Oh, when we move back to the States, I'll get a job. But then I had a baby instead. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babies come so, first. That's for yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, I got you. Cool. Well, awesome. All right. Well, we're going to do a birth story today, guys. Yeah. So Mallory, I'll just let you kind of start. I usually tell people um, to kind of start from the beginning. If you had any like fertility mm-hmm. issues, you know, getting pregnant with this, you know, birth or, you know, you can just kind of start from the beginning and okay. talk about your pregnancy and then jump into your birth story. Sounds good. I um. Yeah, so it's it really has been like a really long journey to where we're at right now. And we did struggle with infertility. And I, I've wanted to be a mom like my whole life. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. at least eight years old, I knew that's what I wanted to be. Um, but I always had this fear, like I would have problems getting pregnant. Like, I don't know why I had that fear, yeah. but it ended up being true. And we struggled for o- a- almost two years. And then last March, I had um, surgery to look for endometriosis. Uh because things were, you know, looking pretty good. Like I was fertility charting and everything was looking fine. Um, And so I had surgery and my doctor found um, endometriosis and which he removed and also found that I only have one working tube. Actually, Uh Um, my left tube is like totally shot. (laughs) So he said, but you only need one. (laughs) And I was like, okay. And he said, you know, you could get pregnant within one to two cycles after this. And I was like, ah, that's way too optimistic. Um, but I ended up getting pregnant the second cycle after surgery. So nice. That was, I was so elated. I mean, if you've dealt with and anyone listening, like if you've dealt with infertility and then you get pregnant afterwards and like seeing that first positive pregnancy Mm -hmm. test, Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, you can't even believe it. Like, I think I took seven pregnancy tests over the course of a couple of days because I was just yeah. so terrified that something would happen, you know, like right. this carrier or whatever. Um, yeah. But everything, you know, worked out fine. I had a really, really healthy pregnancy. And since we were, we were in Germany at this time. So I actually spent two thirds of my pregnancy in Germany. So I got to experience German prenatal care, which was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. Um, and one of the cool things about that is you get an ultrasound every single appointment. And so I think I have like seven really? different pictures of the utero. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's such a, it's a different experience. It's just like a different vibe, mm-hmm. um, than, than America. I mean, not, I'm not saying it's better, but it's just like, it's different, you know? So right. it's cool to be able to experience that. Right. So then when I was 30 weeks pregnant, um, we moved from Germany to California <laughs> because my husband got into a graduate school program here. He's with the army, but it's at a naval school. And so of course we had to come over here. The school didn't start till this January. Mm-hmm. Um, and his first day of school was actually two days before my due date. <laughs> So oh, my wow. due date was January 8th and he started school on January 6th. So, but we got to come over a little early just, you know, because I was pregnant and could only fly, you know, I couldn't fly past like 34 weeks. 
Yeah, so, I was going to say that. I was thinking about the, the flying thing too. Yeah, it was definitely, if you're going to be flying in late pregnancy, which I don't suggest, but if you have to definitely get a bulkhead seat and like sit on the end so that you can get up and down okay. as much as you want. Okay. That saved me. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say, because I... So like I didn't fly at all with, and I guess I'm not going to fly. I was planning on flying with this one, but now that like coronavirus is going on, <laughs> I'm not anymore. <laughs> um, but I didn't fly at all with Walter. So I don't have any tips or anything for pe- But I know that, I mean, there are plenty of pre- pregnant women who fly and I think yeah. the cutoff is even, it's less for international travel. So that's why I was like, right. Ooh, 30 weeks. That's probably cutting it kind of close. <laughs> Yeah, we were kind of get kind of close, yeah. <laughs> but with yeah. the military, it's so crazy because everything, like when they say move, you move. And like, if they don't say right. move, you have to wait. And so we were waiting on our orders, which is like your official paperwork to yeah. move and to actually schedule your movers and do all this stuff. Yeah. Um, we didn't get that until like late September and we came over in late October. Ah, so we gotcha. had one month to do all of this stuff. Um, wow. and then wow. actually, also during my pregnancy, we did a ton of traveling around Europe cause we knew we were leaving. And so mm-hmm. when I was pregnant, I think we were, we went to six different countries. <laughs> so wow. I like to say that Max has been to like all these places already. He doesn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. How fun though. I mean, to get to do that, you know? Yeah. It was like, we got to have like all these baby moons. <laughs> yeah. For <laughs> real. Different places. So wow. anyway, so yeah, so we moved when I was 30 weeks, um, got a nonstop flight, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we had to stay in a hotel when we got here because we were waiting on military housing. So we checked into this hotel on base and we were there for like three-ish, almost four weeks. And then Mm -hmm. we went on another trip to visit family. So I was about 34, 35 weeks at this point. My doctor advised that he was like, it's not recommended, but you know, you can do what you want. Right. Right. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm having my baby showers. <laughs> so we went to Texas, had a baby shower there, Wisconsin. I'm from Texas, went there with my husband's from Wisconsin uh-huh. and went there for a baby shower and Thanksgiving. Hey, might as well. Right. I mean, <laughs> I like, know. Right? Hey, <laughs> just knock it all out. Right. And, and I felt good. Like I said, like every, I had such a healthy, normal pregnancy. It was, yeah, you know, everything was so smooth, you know, nothing yeah. out of the ordinary. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. Huge yeah. difference. Like if you're having issues, you know, obviously they mm-hmm. say no, right. <laughs> but if you're <laughs> healthy and you're low risk, I mean, obviously anything, I guess could happen at any time, but yeah, if you're healthy and you're low risk, your chances are, are, right. are pretty good that you know everything's going to be okay, but well, yeah. good. I'm glad you got to go back and then, and then come up you know, come right back. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a fun time. So we came back, I was about 35 weeks by that point and we still didn't have a house. We were promised a house at the beginning of December, like December 4th. And Mm -hmm. that was the day after we came back and they're like, um, yeah, so it's not ready for you. They're doing mold remediation. Oh no. So, and this area is very, um, prone to mold. So it's a kind of problem. So we're like, okay, well, back to checked into a different hotel, which was right across the street from the housing office. So we could go over there a couple times a week and I'd go in there and like rub my big pregnant belly be like, <laughs> hey, you have a house for us yet? <laughs> I'm going to have this baby right in your office if you don't. <laughs> How stressful though. Oh, I can't it was. imagine. It uh, was oh. so, it was definitely not what. I imagine for my first yeah. pregnancy, you know, you always imagine like getting your nursery set up right. and at least having a house, you know, yeah. but we didn't have that. So, oh, also we have a German shepherd. I forgot to mention that. So oh, she was oh. living with us in the hotel as well. So it's oh, me and my husband and her dog. So yeah, we were in that hotel and we kept getting told, oh yeah, like, yeah, you'll, you'll have a house by Christmas. And I'm like, yes, that would be the best Christmas present ever. Right, right. Christmas comes, no house. We're like, okay. Oh gosh. By New Year's, you'll have a house. Okay, New Year's. Uh, that'll be that'll be great. New Year's Day. I'm 39 weeks pregnant. I'm full term, you know. <laughs> um, and New Year's comes and goes, and we don't have a house. Oh, no. So so then it comes to my husband's first day of school on January 6th. So he's he goes to school. That day, we finally get a house offer. 
and the e- like we get the email and like all the paperwork. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, like at the 11th hour, <laughs> like two days before oh, due date. Oh, no. like what the heck? Yeah, yeah it was just, ugh. I had, I had to do some uh, complaining, let's just say, <laughs> and that got some things rolling. Like I was going to say, I would, <laughs> oh, I was going to say like, I would do a little bit more than, comp- I would have done a little bit more than complaining like, yeah. <laughs> since I'm really uh, nasty, ugly, like, Hey, come oh, on yeah. guys. <laughs> Oh yeah, but you yeah, could you, you we could call it people. complaining for uh you know just it sounds better right <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> uh, but yeah you're pregnant almost forty weeks you don't have a house I mean you can yeah. imagine just yeah the emotions going on yeah. so oh, for, but you know sure. at the same time I felt like you know what this is like I'm I'm a storyteller I I'm I'm a blogger and like mm-hmm. I love telling stories. And I was like, you know what, this is tough, but this is going to be an amazing story. Yeah, this is this will go happens. in the log. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> this will be epic, whatever happens. Yeah. So anyway, so we, we got the house offer. So then on January 7th, day before my due date, we like did all the paperwork. And then later that day, we were supposed to go in and get our keys and all of that. I also mm-hmm. on that same day had my um, four, 40 week prenatal appointment. Mm-hmm. So I went in, usually my husband would go with me, but he had a school thing at the exact same time. So he dropped me off. Um, and then I went to my appointment just thinking that everything would be cool. Like it'd be quick in and out. And, yeah. you know, I, I kind of feel spoiled by German prenatal care because with like not having an old pound every appointment, it's like, wait a minute, where's my ultrasound? Uh-huh. <laughs> so like uh-huh. the appointments would just feel like so quick to me, you know, because uh-huh. I wasn't used to that. So, you know, I go in and they do all my vitals and listen to the baby's heartbeat and then it took a while for the doctor to come in. And then finally he came in and um, checked me um, for dilation. And he got this concerned look on his face. He's like, um, I'm going to send you to the ultrasound room to check the position of the baby. Uh oh. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. Like part of me was like concerned, but then the other part, I was like, oh, I get an ultrasound. Right. <laughs> See the baby one more time. Right. Before- and, and so I go over there to the ultrasound room and he does a quick ultrasound and there's his head at the top of my uterus. He oh, no. totally reached. He had been head down at 39 weeks when they do the manual, you know, exam to mm-hmm. see like the positioning. Mm-hmm. As far as my doctor could tell, he had yeah. been head down. And I wonder, and I always wonder, like when they say that, hmm, I mean, yes, <laughs> you say that they're head down, but could a 39 week Are baby they? really turn? I mean, did you feel, because usually, usually if that happens at 39 weeks, you feel it. You're like, whoa, something just, mm-hmm. something just tumbled inside of me. Um, or it's like a pro, you know, you're just like very uncomfortable for like a day as they kind of turn. Um so did you experience that at all? Or I wonder if maybe it was, maybe he was breached. Yeah. Um, no, any yeah, that's really funny because one of my nurses, it, when I gave birth, she asked mm-hmm. me that yeah. and I was like, you know, I just, I don't remember anything huge. Yeah. There were times where he would move and I, it would feel almost painful, uh-huh. but that it seemed like that was happening. Like not just that last week, like, like 39 to 40. Yeah, yeah. Like also my last ultrasound that I had in Germany, I was about 28 weeks and he was mm-hmm. breached at that point. Mm-hmm. So, and then I Who ended knows? up having, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, officially he, <laughs> the official story is that he turned, um, yeah. but yeah. you know, it's like, you're, I'll always wonder. Well, like, that also makes them look better too. Yeah. <laughs> that like, I know. oh, you were head down and then like, oh, I checked you and, but you know, oh, yeah, maybe you weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Not so, to bash uh, anybody, but no, no, no. It's, <laughs> but go on. It's, yeah. I, I just always will have that question mark in the yeah. back of my head. But anyway, yeah. but he, my doctor was shocked. I was yeah. shocked. I was like, whoa. Okay. So yeah. he, he sat me up and he was like, okay, let's talk about your options. And this is something, I, my doctor really was amazing because I really felt like he gave me true informed consent. Yeah. And, you know, as a nurse, like I totally understand, like, you know, what should go into that, like what co- coercion feels like and all that. Right. Um, and so I really felt like he totally gave me the reins and uh, I just felt like really empowered by that. So he said, okay, you know, we can either, we can do a virgin, like time is of the essence, obviously, because you're 40 weeks and you can go into labor at any point. 
mm-hmm. but we could do a version um, or we can ske- just schedule a C-section. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I definitely, or, or also he said, you don't have to make a decision right at this moment. You can go home and talk to your husband about your options. Yeah. yeah. Which was so nice. Like, but I, I really was feeling like, okay, yeah, I'm 40 weeks. I need to make a decision right away. Consulting with my husband is not going to change what I decide. So I was like, let's do a version. Like I'm the boss. <laughs> I don't have to talk yeah. to him. <laughs> I, I'm running this show. So yeah. He's just like his school schedule is just gonna have to work, you know, right. with right. what goes on. Right. So I said, let's do the version. He said, Okay, cool. Do you want to do pain management? And I've heard that it's very, very painful to turn mm-hmm. a baby. And I'm also a very small person. I'm barely five one and I'm very okay. short waisted because I okay. have actually have scoliosis. Okay. Um, so I really have a short torso, which also surprises me like, wow, how did he have room anyway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, please. I'll, I'll do pain management. I was planning on doing a natural, you know, an unmedicated birth, mm-hmm. but I was like, this is not gonna, a version is not birth. So I, I don't want to like go through that pain. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, let's do that. And he said, okay, if he turns, which my doctor has like a two thirds uh, success rate of oh. turning. Oh, wow. So it was like a really good chance that he would turn. Yeah. Um, and so he said, you could either go home and wait for natural labor to start, or we can do an induction right after the version, like if he mm-hmm. turns. And I said, I'll take the risk of him turning back breach. And I want to go and wait for natural labor to start. He's like, yeah, cool. We can work with that. Like, that's great. Yeah. So he was like, totally fine with all my choices. So they scheduled me at the hospital for the very next morning, actually. They were very booked, but thankfully, I was able to get in, like, right away the next morning, for mm-hmm. really, like, first thing. Mm-hmm. So then my husband came and picks me up, and then we had all this stuff to do with our house. We had to go and, like, get our keys and, you know, sign all the paperwork. So we had to do that. And then also, remember, we came from Germany. So we had, we came with nine suitcases mm-hmm. and a big dog crate, and then we were accumulating baby stuff. Mm-hmm. So we had a storage unit that we had to empty out because it renewed the next day. But now that we had a house, we didn't want to like keep paying for that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so we had to, we had to run a U-Haul because it wouldn't fit in our SUV. Mm-hmm. And so after we got our keys, then we went over to the storage unit, emptied it out because it closed at six o'clock and we were like cutting it close for that. So we're like rushing around. I'm really yeah. stressed out because I'm yeah. like, this baby's breached. I'm having this person tomorrow, <laughs> like, and so we, of course I can't do anything. You know, I can't like lift heavy stuff. <laughs> so right. I'm like helpless. Right. We load, my husband loads up everything from the storage unit and that by this time it's like seven o'clock and we're starving and we're like, okay, let's just order like Uber eats, get it delivered to the hotel mm-hmm. because at this point, you know, we don't have furniture and the furniture wasn't set to be delivered to the house until the next to the following week. So we had to keep living in the hotel. Gotcha. Also during this time, I kept joking how funny it would be to bring a newborn home to a hotel. So (laughs) keep keep that in mind. It didn't become so funny anymore. Um, So we go home or go back to the hotel and we order food and it arrives. And around 730 is when I started feeling contractions. And that's wait. around when I started. Wait, wait, wait. Did you have your version yet? I'm confused. No, okay, I did not okay. have my version yet. Okay. 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 <laughs> it was scheduled for the next morning at 7. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I go, but at this point I'm like, you know what? I've been having a lot of Braxton Hicks. Yeah. Like for the past five days. Yeah. Every day they started getting, you know, just slightly more intense, but you know, Nothing yeah. that I couldn't handle. No, yeah. You know, I didn't have to stop and breathe, you know, like you say in your birth class, like I wasn't having to do any of that. So I'm right. like, whatever, this is a little longer than normal, but it's not that bad. So I start eating my dinner and I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to regret these ribs that I'm eating here. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, I was starving, so I didn't care. Yeah. So um, also my parents, they live in Texas, were on their way out to Mm -hmm. California. They were driving. They had a bunch of our baby stuff from our Mm -hmm. shower and they were like in Arizona at this time. And I started texting my mom. I was like, you know, I'm starting to have like more contractions, but I don't know. Like I, I 
I just wasn't convinced that it was actual labor, Mm -hmm. but they weren't letting up. And I did start timing them on my app just to, you know, keep track. So I was like, you know what? They're not stopping. It was like 830 by this time. And I said, I'm going to take the dog for a walk because normally when I would have Braxton Hicks, they would come on when I was just sitting and Mm -hmm. they would stop when I would move. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if they're Braxton Hicks, they're going to stop if I go for a walk. Well, I ended up having two contractions on the walk. Uh, we couldn't have been gone more than 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. So I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Um, so we came back. I just, I like finished packing my hospital bags for the next morning, you know, just in case the version didn't work and I needed a C-section, you know, just tidied up the, the hotel. And my husband, he was busy doing like schoolwork and notifying his professors like, hey, my wife has a complication and we have to, you know, go to the hospital tomorrow. Yeah. So anyway, so it gets really late (laughs) and another little caveat, we're night people. So we stay up like super, super late. Yeah. So, (laughs) so we're, it was like 1030 and I, I was at this point, I was like, oh, I really wish I could get like to the bath and like take a nice Epsom salt bath and like relax. Cause that always helps me like having Braxton Hicks too. But then my husband gets done with his stuff and he's like, okay, we got to go unload the U-Haul into the house because then we have to do a self return tonight. And I'm like, uh, and in my mind, I was like so annoyed because I was like, I just want to get a bath. Yeah. And gosh, like you have so much other stuff. You got a version scheduled in the morning. You're having contractions or probably real contractions. And uh, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Uh, But I, you know, I didn't. I didn't want to complain. I was like, I have a high pain tolerance. You know, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Like it's fine. And also I didn't, I didn't tell him that I was having these contractions because I was like, I don't want him to worry. You, you don't. Know? I know. I remember uh, same thing, like not same thing, but <laughs> my, I woke up in labor and like, I didn't wake my husband up for a few hours on purpose because I didn't want to just tell, you know, I'm like, let me just yeah. let him chill. And then, like, I'll let him know when it really gets serious. I get that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. You don't want to give a false alarm. Right. So right. yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one who was yeah. like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we go over the hotel was like a couple minutes from our house. So we drive over there. I follow him in the, in our car. Cause then we're going to have to go return the U-Haul mm-hmm. and drive back. So we go to the house and, you know, of course my husband's doing most of the unloading. I was able to carry a few light things into the mm-hmm. house, mm-hmm. but at this time, so we're walking back and forth from the garage to the house or I was going up the stairs a couple of times, I even like jumped into the back of the U-Haul a couple of times. To grab All a of the things, things that put you into labor. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't even think about that, but in, <laughs> in retrospect, I'm like, that totally got it going. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're already <laughs> contracting. Yeah. But I just, you know, I just powered through it. And there were a few that I remember I was standing on the back porch. We were almost done. And I was standing, I was like walking back to the garage. And I had a contraction. I was like, okay, I got to breathe through this. And I'm yeah. just standing there and my husband sees me. He's like, what's wrong? Like, oh, He's crap. <laughs> like, oh man, my cover's blown. <laughs> um, I was like, just very calmly, I'm having a contraction. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like he knew I had been having Braxton Hicks for five uh-huh. days. So it's like, you know, I yeah. guess he that's what it was. So it's, it ended and then we're like, okay, we got to go return the U-Haul. So I'm like, okay, so I've got to drive our SUV over to the U-Haul and I'm having contractions. They're starting to get worse. Okay. And I'm just like praying in the car, please don't let me have a contraction yeah. while I'm driving. Yeah. I, I, and I did, but it was thankfully, it was like only 30 seconds and it wasn't that bad. Okay. I'm like, okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I get to the U-Haul. I'm sitting in this driver's seat waiting for my husband to like finish all the paperwork to you know, return the U-Haul. Mm-hmm. And by this time it's like, I think it was like 11 o'clock. So I had to start fasting at 11 for the version. So I was so thirsty and I'm having these contractions and we had just been walking back and forth and I'm like, I can't drink water. Like I'm so parched. But mm-hmm. so while I was sitting there in the passenger or in the driver's seat waiting for my husband, I had the worst contraction up till that oh. point. And I totally ignored 
everything you said in your class. I was like <laughs> tensing up. I was like digging my fist into my legs. I'm like, I you know it's real. <laughs> I was like, and I was text. I texted my mom. I was like, I don't think these are Braxton Hicks anymore. Like it took me like four hours to realize this. Oh, gosh. And she, it's a good thing that she said something because I don't know. I might have stuck it out for a little longer because she was like, you know what? You have a known breech baby and you yeah. probably, you really need to call your doctor. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, you're probably right. So my husband finishes up and he jumps into the passenger seat and looks at me to like, okay, drive home. And I was like, I can't drive. And he, and he yeah. says, why? <laughs> I was like, I'm having contractions. They're getting worse and I need to call my doctor. Oh, so Lord. we drive back to the hotel and I, I waited to call my doctor until we got back to the parking lot because I didn't want him to like hear that we were in the car and it was raining. And I was like, he's going to think I'm crazy. Like it's almost midnight and I'm out. And I don't know. I was having all these like crazy pregnant woman thoughts. Of course. Yeah. You, everybody <laughs> does that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So I call my doctor and like, you know, he asked me about, you know, to describe the contractions. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better. I'll meet you at the hospital. You better come yeah. in and just get checked. So, you know, we finished packing up our bags and go to the hospital. And I was so terrified that I was like, I don't want to be one of those people that goes in and they're like, oh, you're not in labor. Like, go home, lady. (laughs) (laughs) I was so scared. But like in between contractions, I was so surprised because when I wasn't having a contraction, I felt like pretty much normal. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I just didn't expect that. I just expected to just be like an agony. I don't know. Right. right. Um, and so when I was checking in, like, cause we had to go through the ER entrance cause it was after midnight by this point. And I, you know, I was in contraction, so I felt pretty good, but I felt like I kind of had to fake like that I was actually a labor. So I was like, <laughs> I was like leaning against the, t- with, um, the counter. I was like, <laughs> I think I'm in labor. Like, I was like, I don't want them to think that I'm fake. <laughs> so, so finally they were like, okay, there's the medical escort. They'll take you up to the floor, so the mm-hmm. LMD floor. And she was like, "Do you want a wheelchair?" I said, "No, I'm okay. I can walk." Mm-hmm. Bad idea. I Uh-oh. had a contraction while walking up there. So then we get there, and they, you know, put me into like the. I guess it was like a triage room or whatever. It looked like a surgery prep room. Mm-hmm. Um. So they, you know, get into the gown and all that. They check me, put me on the monitor, and I was about six centimeters oh, dilated. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, yeah, you're definitely in labor. And she, the nurse was like, you're really efficient. Like, have you been in labor? I was like, well, the contractions started like five hours ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was pretty, like, I was pretty proud of my, like, this is, this is great. I didn't even yeah. realize I was in labor until the last minute. Yeah. And so then they, my doctor came and then there was like the on-call doctor too. And they're like, okay, we're going to check check you or, you know, do an ultrasound to double check that the baby is still breached. Right. <clears throat> because if he's not, like if he turned for some reason, you know, then yeah, cool. you could yeah. go in labor. So, but unfortunately he was still head up. Yeah. So they're like, all right, we're doing a C-section. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, like this is crazy. But, you know, I felt like I knew it was the best thing. Right. You know, this is the safest thing for both of us. And so I was like, totally at peace with it, even though, yeah. You know, it was totally not what I had envisioned. I was like, you know what? It's just part of the story. Yeah. Like, and I mean, is- gosh, like just to add to everything, like you had a version <laughs> scheduled the next day. You went into natural labor on your own. You were six centimeters. You got to six centimeters on your own when you get. Yeah. And now you have to, you know, now you're having a C-section. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Totally cool. Yeah. And it was, it was also like cool to think like, oh, if he had been head down, like it probably would have been a pretty quick sleep. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. That would have been great. So, um, so anyway, so they like, you know, prepped me. There's so many people. I mean, like when you have a C-section and like people are yeah. coming in and out and, right, right. you know, and I'm like trying to answer questions when I'm having contractions, like the, the, um, the guy from the lab came, he was so funny. He was like, hi, I'm Dracula. I was like, <laughs> wait, is that your <laughs> Aww. And you know, he's asking Good it was joke. Like, <laughs> yeah. So then, um, so yeah, they prepped me and then I was able to walk into the OR, which mm-hmm. was really cool. Um, cause I didn't have like any, you know, pain medication yet. Yeah. Um, so I walked in and they did the spinal, um, and I thankfully no like adverse effects to the spinal except for the really bad shaking. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, you know, no nausea or anything, which I was so thankful for. Yeah. And 
yeah, so they, everything, you know, was ready. They're like, did the, I don't know if they do, did they do like a test cut? Like when they like try to see if you're numb or like, what, mm-hmm. did, what exactly do they do? Yeah. The, like yeah. And it's the that. same everywhere. Yeah. It's just, okay. um, they don't actually cut you. They just take like, uh, I don't even, I can't even know, I can't remember the name of the instrument, but a surgical instrument that doesn't have a, that has kind of a sharp end, but not like a cut, not like a blade end. And they just kind of pinch you really hard (laughs) down there (laughs) just to make sure, like pinch your skin really hard, just to make sure you you don't feel it. And then, and then they say, okay, you're good. And then, and then we're, then we're good. Then we can cut. Okay, cool. So they did that. Everything was fine. They brought my husband in and it was like within minutes. Um, he was, Max was being born. Yeah, it's quick. And it, it was quick. so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was like screaming. He came out butt first. Yeah. Well, yep. <laughs> and, um, he was screaming, like he was all pink. He had a little bit of hair Yeah, and it was just like the best of moment ever. Like I'm all sure. of this, like infertility and then like all the anxiety that comes with pregnancy after infertility and then yeah. moving and just like not having a house for so long. And then finally like giving birth, it was, it was just like the accumulation of everything. It was, it was awesome. like the top like, of the pyramid, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. em- emotion wise. That's awesome. Yeah, That's totally. awesome. And I was going to say, um, yeah, for people listening who have C-sections, but if it's your first C-section and it's like that where it's unplanned and, you know, you haven't had any previous surgery on your uterus or anything. It does. It's, it's usually like two minutes, you know, they lay you down and they cut you open and there's not really any scar tissue to go through. There's, you know, they cut skin and then they cut uterus and then baby. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very quick. If you've had multiple C-sections before, it can take a little bit longer just to kind of cut through layers and there's, you know, scar tissue and stuff built up, but yeah it's a lot of people are very surprised by that by like the whole prep is it takes forever and then once you get into a war it's like okay we numb you up that takes a few minutes and then lay you down and cut we're good baby's out yeah (laughs) and I've seen like in nursing school I saw a c-section yeah like you know it's like totally different from right right that perspective like you're not I don't know and then of course it's not as emotional right actually happening to you so it was it was so amazing and he was born on his due date um, wow, January yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he's very functional. Um, so yeah. And then everything, you know, they, we did it a couple of things that I wish I would have asked for is if they like could have done the clear drape, mm-hmm. um, yeah. or like yeah. lowered it. And then like, I wish I would have asked for skin to skin, like in the OR. I don't know yeah. if they could have done that, but I didn't ask, but my husband did get to do skin to skin with him like That's pretty good. soon after he was born. So I was, I was glad of, about that. So um, recovery went well. Like I was able to, um, in the recovery room, I didn't have to wait that long for him to be brought to me and mm-hmm. we did skin to skin and he like latched on right away oh, for good. the breastfeeding. It was, yeah, it was great. So a crazy story. And I was going to say, I have, <laughs> I think I have three questions for you. Number yeah. one is I want to know how your postpartum recovery healing process went having a C-section. Um, so let's go over that first. Then we'll and I'll okay. go to my, then I'll go to my next two questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, recovery went really well. So, um, I was in the hospital. That was a Wednesday, early, early Wednesday morning, like 2 okay. AM. And then I got discharged Saturday afternoon. My doctor okay. gave me the option to go home go home, you know, quote home (laughs) to the hotel uh, on Friday. But I was like, I feel like I just need one more day. Plus I was like, I'm going home to a hotel. Like I'd rather just stay here and like have the help. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, recovery went well. I never actually had to take a narcotic. Um, I just like took the, whatever, is it the tramadol or it's probably different there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, um, <laughs> we do, we do, um, no, it's not tram at all. It's, that's um, true. Ketterlac or, uh, okay. Tordal, Tordal. Yeah. Tordal, yeah. That's what I, that's what <laughs> yeah. I know. No, no, no. You're, it's so funny because I get those two mixed up too. Tram at all and Tordal. And I yeah. always think I'm going to say tram at all, but it's Tordal, but yeah, no, but Tordal <laughs> just for all. anybody listening is, um, it's kind of, it's basically IV, uh, ibuprofen. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, so my pain like wasn't terrible. The worst pain definitely was breastfeeding and like having the uterus mm-hmm. contract. That mm-hmm. definitely was the most painful thing. Yeah. We also had um like when my milk came in, I was still in the hospital and I was like so engorged. It was so painful. And he was having some issues with latching. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had some lactation consultants on hand and then the nurses were really well versed too. And Good. they helped me so much. Like I'm so, I couldn't have done it without them. Like my mom, my parents were there by this time. And my mom has a lot of experience with breastfeeding too. So oh, she good. was able to help as well. Um, but yeah, they were all just, my nurses were amazing. Like all yeah. of them. That's great when you have good resources like that, yeah. especially in the hospital. And that yeah. br- brings me to my next question. I want to know about your breastfeeding experience with him. Yeah, it's overall it's been good um Mm -hmm. we did I've dealt a couple times with like clogged ducts not mastitis thankfully yeah um but um yeah yeah, clogged ducts a couple times and then you know just we we had it took like a a few weeks to really get that latch going and for him to figure it out yeah it takes a few weeks overall whether it's latch whether it's Mm -hmm supply, whether it's this issue, whether, I mean, it just takes, if you've never breastfed before and it, it takes weeks, you know, for second and third and, you know, different babies learning to breastfeed too. But if you've never breastfed before, those first few weeks are just, it's a, it's all a learning game. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It can be tough at times. So, um, but I'm, I'm really thankful to have had that support because I yeah. like now I'm just like breastfeeding support is so important. Oh my gosh. I know. That's it's why so I just push my, it's not my class, but it's the class that I recommend the online mm-hmm. class to take or just something, you know, just mm-hmm. do some or have somebody like you had resources very readily available, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. so, I mean, it, it was so foreign to me as a labor delivery nurse, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, I thought I kind of knew about breast breastfeeding, but I didn't and I struggled and blah, blah. And just, yeah, yeah. I'm all about education. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, all right. So my last and final question is what happened with the moving situation? <laughs> <laughs> so we did end up right. Like my joke came true yeah. and we ended up bringing him home. His first home was the hotel room. Okay. <laughs> so even though we had our house, we are, our, our household goods, like all our furniture wasn't set to be delivered till that following Tuesday. So like a week after I went into okay. labor. Okay. So we did have a bet. We had like bought a new bed, mm-hmm. uh, like a king size bed. And so we had that, but we didn't have a frame yet. And I was like, that's mm. going to be so annoying. Like, <laughs> like a C-section, like (laughs) sleeping on the floor, basically. So we stayed in the hotel for a couple more nights. Um, and then we came, we moved into our house. We got our furniture delivered when he was like six days old. So there I am with this tiny newborn and these movers coming. And, but thank goodness for my parents, like, I don't know what we would have done without them. Like they seriously saved us. Like they joke that they're (laughs) <laughs> all they do now in retirement is help their grown children move <laughs> because they've helped me like three times now with military moves and stuff. So they, like my mom set up my whole kitchen um, and, you know, they helped set up everything, you know, set up furniture. Like we got a few new pieces of furniture. They set that up. Like, yeah, it was just amazing. And then, you know, my husband had school, like he was still, right. He has, he was able to take a week off from going to class, thankfully. Okay. But then, you know, like a week later, he had to go back. So, um, and we only have one car. So thankfully my parents, you know, they had their car with, with them. And so they were able to drive me and Max around to, you know, if we needed to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, yeah, I mean, that was just, especially with having had a C-section, you know, there's like limited things I can do, you know, lift, not right. lifting and things. So yeah, they were just a lifesaver. They're the best parents ever. That's so great. And that's so important. I I mean, I just, it's, you know, it's so, it's so wonderful to have resources like that, to have your parents or your family that, and I'm, I mean, I'm even super lucky that like both of our parents live, both sets of parents live very, very close. We have a lot of family here and we, you know, just have a lot of support and it just makes me like, like feel for people who just have nothing, you know, like it's just 
you and your husband or you and your partner and like your, and it's like, you have neighbors that maybe can help, but like, you know, mm-hmm. both sets of parents live far away and nobody's able to come or, you know, or they don't, you know, they're not living or, you know, it's like, gosh, right. like there's so many, I mean, parents and family is so, mm-hmm. it takes a village. Like I didn't realize <laughs> what that phrase really meant af- until after I had a baby. And that is like such the truth. When it comes to having a baby that it takes, it's like, it does take, truly take a village. It does. And, and, you know, I'm sure there's like other military spouses listening and like, you know, we could have, we could have been having a baby over in Germany, you know, like so often it's, I mean, sometimes military spouses have to give birth without their husband, like they're deployed and they're there alone. And it's it's incredible. Like what, like, so I feel really blessed that you know, my parents were able to be here because that's not the case for every military family. For so sure. that for can sure. be really tough. So yeah. I, I, I get that. Yeah, for sure. Well, awesome. Well, let's wrap up. That was so, that was such a crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy story. I'm so <laughs> glad everything ended up, you know, being okay. And you just had a few days where you were in hotel and not in a house and kind of just homeless. Um, (laughs) Do you want to remind, and I know you said you were in the blogging space as I am. So do you want to remind listeners if they want to follow along, if you have Instagram or your blog or anything that you want to drop can can find you? Yeah. So I, my blog is called warrior life wellness. Mm -hmm. So warrior, like, you know, soldier, um, (laughs) and .com warrior life wellness.com. And then my Instagram handle is the same warrior life wellness. And I do talk about, you know, a lot about motherhood and also infertility and, you know, what it's like being a mom after infertility or pregnancy after infertility, because it's a different, you know, it can be challenging. So yeah. Yeah. How old is your son now? Yeah, he's, um, he'll be four months this week. Okay. Okay. So he's still little. little. Oh yeah. He's He's just the best. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, Mallory, thank you so much for coming on. I think that was such a great, uh, like, wow, story. (laughs) He had a lot to say. (laughs) So thank you so much for coming on again. Thanks for having me tell my story. I really appreciate it. Are you looking for birth education? Did you know that I have two fabulous birth courses that are super affordable? Well, I do. Head over to mommylabornurse.com slash podcast to take a short quiz to see which birth class is for you. When you purchase either birth course, you'll have full access to it forever. And that means it will never expire and you can access it throughout any stage of your pregnancy or for any subsequent pregnancies that you have. You'll also gain free access to my Facebook group, linked to the class where you can ask questions about your pregnancy, share your birth story after you give birth, read other people's birth stories, and get to know other members who are in the course. There is also a money back guarantee. So if you are at all unsatisfied with your purchase, please, please send me an email at hello at mommylaborers.com for a full refund. There's really no risk to signing up, and I promise you will learn a ton about what's to come when you give birth. As a listener of this podcast, you automatically get 20% off any purchase if you use the code PODCASTLISTENER. I've had tons of moms just like you enter these birth courses and have fabulous, wonderful, empowering births because they feel so much more educated about what's to happen. So if you are at all curious about birth education, again, I encourage you to go to mommylabornurse.com slash podcast and use the code podcast listener to save 20%. All right, so that is it for this episode of the Mommy Labor Nurse Podcast. You probably follow me on Instagram because that's probably where you came from. But if you don't, head over to Instagram and follow me at mommy.labornurse for more. That is certainly where I am most active. I also now have a separate Instagram for just this podcast. So I encourage you to follow my second account at mommylabornurse.podcast as well if you want podcast updates. Again, that is at mommylabornurse.podcast. As always, you guys know that I also have a website where I have tons of articles all about pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, 
newborn stuff, and more at www.mommylabornurse.com. I want to hear more from you on how much you love this episode of the podcast or how you think I can improve. So leave me a comment on one of my pictures, send me a DM, or send me an email with all the love. All right, guys, I will see you same time, same place next week.